Now we begin with the Elon Musk promising more smoking guns on the way after he and journalist Matt Taibbi released a bombshell report on political censorship at Twitter and suppression of the Hunter Biden laptop story ahead of the 2020 presidential election. Taibbi making the revelations in a lengthy Twitter thread on Friday, writing that Twitter's posts and users were routinely removed at the request of both political parties, noting that Democrats held far more clout on that front due to the political leanings of staff. He also revealed internal communications that showed Twitter justified the decision to suppress the laptop story using its hacked materials policy, but Taibbi says that reasoning is flawed, stating this policy is normally required an official law enforcement finding of a hack, but such a finding never appears throughout what one executive describes as a whirlwind 24-hour company-wide mess. And according to Taibbi, that led the social media platform to take some rather surprising action. He says, Twitter, Twitter took extraordinary steps to suppress the story, removing links and posting warnings that it may be, quote, unsafe. They even blocked its transmission via direct message, a tool hitherto reserved for extreme cases, e.g. child pornography. During a Saturday question and answer session, Musk was asked directly about the mainstream media largely ignoring these Twitter revelations. Clearly, <laughs> if... If, if Twitter is doing one team's bidding before an election, shutting down dissenting voices um, on a pivotal election, that is the very definition of election interference. I and mean, what the hell else would you, of course, it's like, yes. And yet, Brian, the attack seems to me squarely faced on the messenger instead of the explosive revelations, the message. This was a fascinating weekend, let's be clear. If you're a journalist, you should love this. And journalists around the country said, ah, not a big deal, just a nothing burger kind of story here. But if you look at what they found, what they found was a Twitter that looks a lot like FTX. Everybody was making it up as they went. They were inventing policy, stretching policy. You know what I love about this? Elon Musk is reinventing the game. He is saying we are going to be radically transparent, and I challenge the rest of you to keep up with that. I love that. I think he's going to actually outcompete people with this. Um, but the other thing to keep in mind here is we haven't gotten answers on the FBI story. Mm -hmm. What's going on with the FBI here? That piece of the puzzle really wasn't revealed with what we got over the weekend. That is the central issue we've got to figure out because they were tipping Twitter off to specifics in this story, including Hunter Biden. That means something. We need to know more about that. Right. And on that note, Martha, as Miranda Devine was reporting, the, the FBI alerted Twitter to potential political operatives hacking and releasing content, cited the Hunter laptop scenario. But was it Twitter that twisted and ran with it, led to a handled mentality of any request they would just honor in that moment? Oh, must be this, must be this. Um, and the, it begs the question as well, does it matter? Because if the American people had known the content, wouldn't that have changed their decision mm. anyway? Mm -hmm. Potentially. You know, I, I think it says a lot about what Twitter is, right? We know it is not a town square. <laughs> it is not a place, and we know this very clearly from everything that's been revealed, of the inner workings at this company. They made decisions about what worked, what didn't work, what they wanted to sit on, what they wanted to amplify. So they are not an open town square forum. And I think that's what, why Elon Musk says he wants to get all this dirty laundry out there right. because he said, I want to start from, from square one. I want to recreate this company in a way that makes it an open town forum. The New York Post had reported this story. The New York Post wanted to tweet that story and share it with people. Okay, the New York Post is a journalism organization. You can say, you know, what you think about the articles they, they print or whether or not you agree with everything they say. But it's a journalistic or organization. It is not Twitter's job. That's what, as I said before, this is what the comments are for on Twitter. Right. So if someone disagrees with what the New York Post found, or they think it's slanted, or they think it's inaccurate, then they get to weigh in through all of this back and forth. That's what Twitter's supposed to be. I would also point out, it made me think about the 2000 election, because in November of 2000, the uh, early days of November of 2000, there was a story that came out that, um, that George W. Bush had gotten a DWI in Maine in 1976. Mm. It came out through a regional uh, media outlet, and then Fox decided, you know what? This is a story, okay? It's going to go out. And Fox reported it. And then other places started to pick it up. It was a, obviously a story that could have affected people's thinkings right before the election, 
but it was because this is at, at its base a journalist organization we could not avoid that story we put that story out so twitter what are you you know are you a town square if you are you have to say we allow the you know if a newspaper wants to post something we're going to allow them to post it and let the let the town square decide whether or not they think it's valuable the irony that i see too is that you know the, the protection that these social media platforms have enjoyed and continue to enjoy safe from all liability from the horrific content many people do post is because they don't interfere with the content right they just host it that's, that's the argument that right. the courts have exactly. upheld and that's they know they all have egg on their faces now because that's not what they do and zuckerberg also told us that's not right. what they do that's exactly right and we're seeing it play out in real time Amy, and we're also seeing the depth of that toxicity in the cesspool because now it's being used yet again to attack the journalists and calling them red pill takers and worse, simply for rep reporting and daring to report the truth. Yeah, I think that the bottom line here is it's got to be about free speech. Everybody has to have their opinion, and we should, as Americans, be able to look at whatever's put out there and decide for ourselves. No other agency is supposed to filter what we're looking for in public forums, but I totally agree with Brian that this is an opportunity for business. Elon Musk is going to do something that's fair for everyone, and he has to, because in America, Twitter users are one in four adults. Not everybody's using Twitter. In fact, we think everyone's using Twitter because we put it on TV all the time. Most people are lurkers, of, they're lurkers, mm -hmm. like looking for what's on social media. But it's actually an opportunity for business and if Elon Musk does the right thing, keeps it open, guess what? He's gonna get new users and people who wanna talk freely. Right, that might be refreshing. And to Amy's point, 90% of the content put out on Twitter is by 10% of the users. But it's had a direct effect. Frankly, we've seen, for example, the Democrat Party influence. and lawmakers capitulate mm -hmm. to this very loud, very minute segment of the population. And now we are seeing it being furthered. I wonder, once the dirty laundry is aired in this, will the wash actually come out clean? Well, the data dump is going to be fascinating. And Elon Musk has said there will be a data dump. He chose Matt Taibbi and another colleague uh, because he wanted to get the story out clean without having having a million stories out there. And I actually see his point. I would never bet against Elon Musk. I think he's making the right choice. Mm -hmm. At the same time, Martha, to your point about journalism and letting the story get out there and play, we have not seen the mainstream media really cover the story. The Wall Street mm -hmm. Journal actually said, at the time, we examined those messages. Kimberly Strassel at the Wall Street Journal spoke with Tony Bobolinsky, put it all in the record, all before the election. So the story was out there. Mm -hmm. Twitter was just amplifying, put it out in the town hall, the town square. The other point I think is going to be interesting as we see this play out. Remember, Twitter was a publicly traded company mm -hmm. at the time that this all happened. What happens to all of those shareholders that a lot of them lost money, rightly mm -hmm. so, in the whole takeover from Elon Musk from start to finish? Do they have a voice in this? Is it right for a corporation, a publicly traded corporation, to be in the in the well, box saying, well, here's a winner and here's a loser. Mm -hmm. Democrats, you're going to win. Republicans, you're going to lose. That's exactly what the staff was doing. Elon Musk says, look, it's a San Francisco company. Let's be clear here. They were, they were pulling the strings and they, I think, penalized, wrongly so, those at the, at the New York Post and also they penalized those at the Wall Street Journal. And, and here, we were talking mm -hmm. about this on, the, on our networks, both of our networks, before the election of you know, 2020, let's be honest here. What's so interesting is there were internal voices at Twitter saying this doesn't hold up. Right. This doesn't meet our hacked policies policy. We can't do this. And yet the decision by the not Jack Dorsey level, but just below it said, oh, no, we can do it. Yeah. We can right. do this. Well, and that's why I forget what you said comes. about handled. To me, yes. that's one of the most significant, you know, and it goes back to what you were saying, Brian, that, you know, the FBI was having weekly meetings with Twitter. So it's yes. not just Twitter's integrity, it's who they were listening to. Yes. And at these weekly meetings, they were getting these emails, oh, this in from, from the Biden folks, right? And there's a list of links, and it says, please look into these, and then it says, handled. Yeah. And Mark that's Zuckerberg's right. admitted that too, Martha. Yes, that's he right. has. Yeah. The same, same thing. Everything you guys just articulated, by the way, is laying out the foundation for a perfectly set lawsuit. Because you're right, that the corporation owes a fiduciary and legal mm. duty to the shareholders. And that paper trail of absolutely just answering mostly to the left, skewing with political and for political results, I don't know how they're going to get that out of that. That's messy. Shares Very messy. That's right. All right, stay tuned. We will bring you every development as it occurs. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts, Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany, on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern, or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.